Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Quincy College 2022 commencement ceremony. It is my great pleasure to introduce you to today's speakers and guests. Led by today's mace bearer, Sharon King. Quincy College President Richard De Cristofaro. Today's commencement speaker, Governor of Massachusetts, Charlie Baker. Mayor of Quincy, Thomas Koch. Provost and Chief Academic Officer, Dr. Zervit Yatin. Member of the Quincy College Board of Governors, Frank Santoro. And Class of 2022 student speaker, Sarah Nisbet. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the Quincy College Class of 2022. The candidates for graduation from the Division of Professional Programs, led by Professor Jason Pinich. Ladies and gentlemen, the candidates for graduation from the Division of Natural and Health Sciences, led by Dean Andrea McLean.
Ladies and gentlemen, the candidates for graduation from the Division of Nursing, led by Dean Diane Gillis. Ladies and gentlemen, the candidates for graduation from the Division of Liberal Arts, led by Dean William Carroll. also like to recognize the following special guests in attendance this morning. Quincy College Board of Governors, Christopher Carroll, Dolly DePisa, the Honorable Robert Harnes, and Joseph Shea. Past Quincy College Presidents, Daniel Esquino and Michael Bellotti. State Senator John F. Keenan. State Representative Bruce Ayers. Quincy City Councilors Nina Liang and David McCarthy. Sheriff Patrick W. McDermott. Superintendent of Quincy Public Schools Kevin Mulvey and Assistant Superintendent Aaron Perkins. Quincy, Quincy School Committee member Catherine Hubley. Quincy College Trust Chairman Scott Campbell. Sharon King will now come forward. Sharon King is Quincy College's Professor of Medical Laboratory Technology and is our mace bearer for today's commencement ceremony. I now declare Quincy College 2022 commencement exercises open. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the posting of the colors by the Quincy Police Department Honor Guard and the singing of the national anthem by Quincy College professor Richard Grimes and his daughter Elizabeth.
say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled For the land of the free and the home of the brave. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing as we observe a moment of silence for our departed loved ones who passed away and couldn't be here with us today. Please be seated. Good morning. My name? Yes, thank you. <laughs> My name is Dr. Servet Yatin, and I proudly serve as the Provost and Chief Academic Officer at Quincy College. I take pleasure in welcoming you to the Quincy College 2022 Commencement Exercises. Please join me in offering a sincere thank you to Dr. Richard Grimes and his daughter Elizabeth for such a moving rendition of our national anthem and the Quincy College Police Department Honor Guard for participating in our commencement exercises once again. I would like to take a moment to acknowledge two key constituencies who are here today. First, I would like to ask our Quincy College faculty members who have played such a vital role in the success of our graduates to please rise you, so you can be recognized. You are caring, talented, hardworking. Thank you for all your outstanding work and dedication. Please be seated. Next, I would like to recognize the staff members and administrators who have so often assisted our students with administrative, technological, facilities, and student services. Staff, please rise and be recognized. These functions are essential for our students' success. Thank you for your hard work and commitment to the students and the college, and also staff with the shorts all around. Thank you. At this time, it's my pleasure to introduce Frank Santoro, a Quincy native Frank St. Toro graduated from Quincy College with an associate degree before earning both bachelor's and master's degrees in education and embarking on a 40-year career as a teacher and school administrator, primarily here in Quincy. In addition to his role as a member of our Board of Governor, he currently serves as Vice Chair of the Quincy School Committee. It is my pleasure to welcome Mr. Frank St. Toro.
Thank you, Dr. Yatim, Governor Baker, Mayor Koch, President De Cristofaro, Sarah Nisbet, honored guests, faculty, family, and friends, and graduates. Good day. I bring to you congratulations on behalf of the College Board of Governors, on behalf of Paul, Chairman Paul Barbadoro and Governors uh, Joe Shea to my right, as well as uh, Governor Dorothy DePisa to my right, as well as uh, Judge, Governor Judge Robert Harness to my right, and the rest of the board who could not make it today. We congratulate you and wish you the best on your endeavors. In 1969, I sat where you are as a proud graduate of the then Quincy Junior College. I was a bit confused as to where or what I wanted to do after graduation. However, there was one thing I was sure of. Thanks to the staff and the courses at the college, I had a solid foundation for whatever was next. And the same is true for you. Thanks to Quincy College, the staff, and your hard work, especially your perseverance through the pandemic, you are well prepared for whatever you choose to be next. You have a solid foundation to build upon your future and the successes that lie ahead. The Board of Governors congratulates you and wishes you the best in your next adventure. Congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Santoro, appreciate that. And good morning, graduates and families and friends of Quincy College. I am proud to stand before you as the president of Quincy College. And on behalf of the entire college community, I extend a warm welcome as we begin this 2022 commencement ceremony. I commend you, our graduates, for being committed to your studies. And I commend also the dedicated faculty and, and staff who have worked alongside you and believed in your ability to learn, to excel, and to fulfill all of your academic goals. And we know that there are many individuals that have contributed to the academic achievements that have resulted in your presence here today either through emotional or financial or academic support. In the end, the person most influential in helping you to have realized your success in the classroom is you. So you be proud of your discipline, be proud of your efforts and your success, and be proud as you cross the stage to receive your diploma. We are proud of you and we celebrate you on this very special commencement day. At the same time, we also share with you the understanding that as this journey concludes, you will be introduced to new opportunities with unlimited possibilities. So please go forward with confidence, knowing that you have built a foundation as solid as Quincy Granite that will guide you in all of your endeavors. Congratulations, and in closing, I would like to personally wish you nothing but success as you step into such a very bright future. Thank you. At this time, it gives me great pleasure and honor to introduce our next speaker, someone who has been and continues to be a great champion and advocate for Quincy College, someone whose enthusiastic support for our mission helps make a day like this possible, and who has a genuine appreciation for Quincy College, how it contributes to this city and to the region, and also someone whose leadership in transforming this historic city is truly visionary. Please join me in welcoming the 33rd mayor of the city of Quincy, 
Thomas P. Koch. Thank you, President De Cristofaro, Your Excellency, distinguished faculty, and certainly our graduates today. I want to acknowledge Senator Keenan and Representative Ayers, Treasurer Bellotti, Councilors Liang and McCarthy, school committee members Frank Santoro and Kathy Hubley, and certainly the Board of Governors. It gives me a great pleasure and an honor to bring the greetings of the City of Presidents uh, to this beautiful event here at Veterans Memorial Stadium. And before I go on, my, my primary role is to introduce the guest speaker. We are here at Veterans Memorial Stadium. So let's just take a moment and uh, remember all of those men and women donning the uniform all across the world, keeping the peace. I'm very proud of Quincy College, and I believe Quincy College is in for a great future. And I know that because I'm surrounded by colleagues who believe in the mission of Quincy College. And I often say at the high school graduations, uh, it's the, kind of the greatest day to be chair of the school committee is to come to graduation. Well, there's a similar feeling here today. To see the hard work of our faculty and the commitment made to by our city on your behalf, to see it come to fruition here with you getting your degree today. So on behalf of the city, but also personally, congratulations to each of you, because each of you is a different person. Each of you has your own story. And I know you're joined by your loved ones up in the stands, and I know they meant a lot, and I'm sure they're great encouragement along the way toward this day, so congratulations. We're really delighted to have with us um, the guest speaker today, today of such caliber, His Excellency, the Governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, Charlie Baker. And I know that I don't have to say much about the Governor because he's been in the forefront over the last eight years on so many issues. Uh, I recall when the, um, the Governor was first running, he made a visit to my office. We had a great conversation about government and the importance of partnerships between local and state government. Uh, at the time uh, when I was mayor, I needed some help and guidance from some of the business community and he was heading up Harvard Pilgrim and he actually came across the street and was helpful in guidance to me in my role. But I, you know, you, you see the papers, you see it on the news, he has been consistently the most popular governor in the US. It's pretty remarkable in these divisive times, isn't it? Sometimes I wonder we can't seem to get on the same page on some issues, yet this guy has done it on every issue, day in, day out. A largely Democratic state, Republican governor, yet gets along famously with both the Senate and the House. On some issues that were important to me early on, this governor stood out. The issue of addiction, substance abuse challenges, by our various ages, but certainly our younger people. He stood tall on that issue and led. We had major transportation challenges. I now serve on the MBTA Board of Directors and see it more, in, more uh, interestingly, I guess is one term, but more intimately, the day-to-day -day operation and challenges of public transportation. This governor has stood out and didn't say, that's, that's a separate organization. He's taken the lead in providing the necessary resources to bring the T into today's technology. The last two, two and a half years have been very challenging. It's been the greatest health challenge pandemic in modern history. And this governor stood up and led. I can tell you as, as mayor of one of the top 10 cities in the Commonwealth, it wasn't always a case of me calling him looking for help. It was him calling us saying, how can we be of help? I think that's a tremendous attribute to the kind of guy this guy is. So, you know him. He's been a friend of Quincy. He's been a friend of mine. His Excellency, the Governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, Charlie Baker. So thank you very much, Mayor. I I gotta say, that was the kind of introduction that my dad would have liked and my mom would have believed. Um, 
Let me just say to you that you have been a terrific partner for the past seven and a half years. And, and I just want to say that um, Quincy's growth, Quincy's development, Quincy's excellence has shown through during your time as mayor. And the city's in wonderful shape. And I look forward to continue to watching you and the people of Quincy and the leaders here in Quincy continue to build on that success. Let me say to President DiCiafaro and to the faculty and the staff and the governors, thanks so much for your work on behalf of the students and their families who are here today. And on behalf of the graduates and their families, I want to start by offering my congratulations. But I would also like you to stand, turn around, and give a wave or a bow to the folks up in the stands who helped you get here, OK? Like right now. And thank you very much and have a great life. Um, <laughs> these moments, okay, and they are moments, don't happen by accident. And I, I am fond of telling my own children that life is a team sport. And I think in some respects, today is a great example of what great teams together can accomplish. And when I thought about what I might say to the students and the graduates and their families, I reflected on my own graduations. And, you know, I don't even remember who spoke at my high school graduation. I remember who spoke, but I don't remember what he said at my college graduation. And I remember who spoke at my grad school graduation, but I don't remember anything about what he said either, which makes me wonder if I will say anything today <laughs> that will last beyond the moment in which I actually spit it out of my mouth. So that's very funny. I don't know who said that, <laughs> but he said, if I really wanted you to remember this, I'd be handing out checks. You know, Rob Hale is a great guy, and he's a good friend of mine. I am a humble public servant. And you're just going to have to settle for a few words of wisdom. And I'll leave it up to you to decide what the value of those words will be today. But I'm going to start with this, and it's a little bit of a riff on something that the president said. Nobody handed this to you. You earned it. And when you think about the last couple years and what everybody's been through, you really did do it the hard way. And I'm often fond of remembering what my dad always said to me when I was growing up, which was, Nothing worth having is ever easy, son. That's why adversity builds character. And I just want to say to all of you that many of us have hopefully built a lot of character over the last couple years. And to all of you, I want to say congratulations for graduating after and during a very difficult and challenging time for everybody, not just here, not just in Massachusetts, not just in the country, but across the world. And I really do hope that you never let anybody suggest that this wasn't a work of art in many respects for you to be here today. Now, with respect to what happens next, another one of my family's favorite expressions was, we are all the company we keep. And in many respects, I think 
When I think about the company I've kept, I've been blessed. I've been married to the same woman for 35 years. I mean, I would not be the person I am today. I would not live the life I've had. I would not have the children that I have. I would not, I simply wouldn't have been the kind of person I am now if I hadn't spent the last 35 years with the really remarkable woman who was good enough and had enough of a sense of humor to marry me and put up with me. And I say that simply to make the point that we do get to choose the company we keep. We do get to decide how we're gonna to relate to the people we meet and the people we know and how we're gonna build relationships and who we're gonna build them with. The old joke is true, you can't choose your family. But beyond that, it's totally up to you. And when I think about the people that I've managed to surround myself with, the friends I've had, the colleagues I've gotten to know, and the relationships that I've developed, there's just no question that I'm a far better human being because of their presence, their wisdom, their guidance, and in some cases, yeah, they're to the side of the head, in which the usual commentary is something along the lines of, what, are you nuts? And I think in some ways we forget. And I said it earlier that most things are in fact team-based opportunities. And you get to choose the teams. So just make sure when you think about that, you choose the teams that are gonna give you the best chance to be your very best self. The second thing and this may sound a little funny. There's nothing wrong with trying and failing. You know, Michelangelo once said that the greatest challenge for all of us is not so much in reaching and succeeding, but is reaching high for something beyond our grasp and failing. Now, I ran for governor in 2010, and I lost. It was a very public defeat. You can't run for governor and not have a few people notice. And I spent a lot of time after that race talking to reporters who covered the race, talking to friends of mine who followed the race, talking to people in public life who followed the race. And my basic question to them was, what do you think happened? And I'll boil it all down to a simple, you were a pretty lousy candidate, Charlie. You didn't deserve to win. Now, you hear that enough, and it stings. But you know what? It also happened to be true. I went back and I watched all the press conferences. I read the news articles. I watched the debates. And time and time again, when I watched it, I kept thinking to myself, yeah, I really wasn't very good. And I told myself that if I ever did it again, I would learn from that, I would run a different kind of race, and I would make a different kind of case to the voters. Now, when I decided I wanted to do this again. I went and talked to my wife, Lauren, and she said, so are you okay with the notion that when you die, your obituary could start with Charles Baker, who ran twice for governor of Massachusetts and lost both times, <laughs> went on to find a cure for four kinds of cancer, but would lead with the thing about the losses. You okay with that? And I thought about it and eventually concluded that, yeah, I'm okay with that. It's important enough for me to take the chance that I'll try on this 
and fail spectacularly and publicly twice. And I raise that point to simply say that it's okay to take a chance. It's okay to chase an opportunity or a possibility that may not work out if it's important to you. Because in the end, all that's going to matter is whether you felt like you challenged yourself and you chased the things that mattered most. And for me, I got comfortable with the idea that I could be a publicly spectacular failure twice. It didn't work out that way. It worked out a little differently. And I've had this glorious opportunity to serve the people of Massachusetts for the past seven and a half years. But again, that doesn't happen if I wasn't willing to fall on my face again. Abraham Lincoln ran for office numerous times before he got the nomination from the Republican Party in 1860. And he lost every single time. There are so many stories out there of people who find the thing that makes them great, defined in whatever way that works for them. But the story you never read most of the time is the one about the path they took to get there. The path in life is very rarely a straight line. It always comes with ups and downs and bumps and bruises and twists and turns. And that's okay because in many cases, as I said, that's where growth comes from. The third thing I want to suggest is that you recognize and understand that no matter how bad your day is, I promise you there's somebody out there who's having a worse day than you are. And this job in particular brought this home in ways I never could have expected. The mayor talked about the fact that this is Veterans Memorial Stadium. One of the most difficult things you do as governor of the Commonwealth is you meet the planes that come back from some combat theater somewhere in the world when they bring home a son or daughter in Massachusetts who's died in the line of duty. And you show up at the airport and you meet their family, sad beyond belief and so proud of their family member. And then you wait with them, their son, their daughter, their brother, their sister, their wife, their spouse, to come home for the last time. Whatever happens, whatever situation you find yourself in, there's always somebody out there playing a tougher hand than yours. And that should help you recognize and understand that there's a path forward and a host of possibilities if you maintain your balance and go for it. And the final thing I want to say is you should always try to be a force for good. And I know that sounds kind of corny. And it is, but I mean it. 
The mayor talked about the fact that I've tried pretty hard to work with just about everybody, including a lot of people I didn't agree with on a whole variety of issues. Well, my wife and I don't agree on everything. My dad and I don't agree on everything. My mother and I don't agree on everything. Where is it written that every person in America, any person everywhere, is supposed to agree on everything? I've learned more from people I don't agree with on a lot of things than I've learned from a lot of the people I do. Being able to be your best self, being willing to listen and learn from people you don't always agree with, that's the greatest opportunity of all for all of us. My dad was a Republican. My mother was a Democrat. They never voted for the same person. My mom never even acknowledged voting for me. Seriously, I said, she was too sick with Alzheimer's to vote in 2014. But in 2010, when I asked her, she said, honey, you know, it's a secret ballot. Um, but they were married for 60 years. At our dinner table when I was growing up, I have friends who used to come just to watch my parents go back and forth across the table. There's real opportunity in having a receiver that works a lot harder than your transmitter. As my mom used to say, you have two ears and one mouth for a reason. And it's a good thing to be able to do that. And there's a bigger issue at play here. Democracies demand debate and discussion and a willingness to understand and recognize differences. And these days I worry a lot about whether or not we've forgotten that. John Adams, pretty famous guy from Quincy, founder of the United States of America, one of the great statesmen of the early years of the birth of this nation. He had a pretty chilling thing that he said about the longevity of democracies. He said, remember, democracy never lasts long. It soon wastes, exhausts, and murders itself. There is never a democracy that, democ that did not commit suicide. Now, what do you mean by that? He meant that in a free society, it was hard for people over time to respect and understand differences to appreciate the fact that in many cases, the best answers come from many voices engaged in discussion and debate and appreciation of more than one point of view, more than one life experience, more than one way of solving a problem. I happen to think that's the only thing that works. But more and more in public life, you run into people who if they hear something they don't like about something, they just stop listening. Don't do that. Be your best self and listen. You don't have to agree, but if you listen, you may be surprised by what you learn. And one of the reasons I'm optimistic that we will figure this out despite the noise of the present Believe it or not, is a TV show called Ted Lasso. Now, Ted Lasso is about two things Americans, generally speaking, don't find that interesting. Soccer and kindness. That was a joke. <laughs> the most interesting thing about that show, though, was a moment 
when Ted Lasso talked about being judgmental. He said, people who are judgmental don't ask questions. They think they know everything and know everybody and they make judgments. Which means they create giant blind spots for themselves and for others because they don't ask questions. Questions are how we grow. Questions are how we learn. Questions is how you ended up sitting in front of us here today. Because you asked questions. Because you wanted to grow. Because you were curious. Curiosity is the path to success. Being curious about yourself, about your possibilities, about your friends, about your coworkers, about your challenges, about your life circumstances, and asking yourself questions. Do I want to be viewed as the guy who lost running for governor twice for the rest of my life? So be curious. Put this degree to work. Recognize and understand that in life, growth and possibility is about curiosity. And to all those people who make snap judgments and turn off their receiver and don't want to hear it, recognize and understand that in the end, Greatness comes from being open to listen, to being curious, and to recognizing and understanding that your best self is what ultimately will make you happy and bring joy to your friends and to your family and to the core of your existence here in this great place we call America. And with that, I just want to congratulate you once again to say how thrilled and honored I was to be here today. And I know it's not a thousand bucks. <laughs> but I hope you take a little something out of that that someday might be worth at least a few. Congratulations. Governor and, and Mayor, please accept these as a token of our appreciation uh, for being here and participating today. Thank you so much. Such a moving speech. Thank you. I have the honor of introducing today's student, student speaker, Sarah Nisbet, who will receive her associate degree in accounting today. She has been selected to represent this year's class. Sarah embodies the characteristics that describe so many of our Quincy College graduates. Sarah is an active member of Gamma Beta Phi Honor Society, Business Club, Fashion Club, and participant on our indoor co-ed soccer team, just to mention few. Like so many of our graduates, the road to success was not easy. She experienced challenges, set personal goals, exhibited determination, and has realized academic and personal success. I am sure many of you will see yourselves in her story and be inspired further. Sarah, please come forward to address your fellow graduates. Ladies and gentlemen, Sarah Nisbet. Thank you. Governor Baker, Mayor Koch, 
President De Cristofaro, Provost Yatin, members of the Board of Governors, distinguished guests, faculty, staff, family, friends, and fellow graduates. I am honored and humbled to stand here today, representing the Quincy College Class of 2022. We are walking away today with a solid education at an affordable cost that has now set us up for success. But it is much more than that. Today is not just about a piece of paper. Materials will fade away, but the wisdom we gained here changed us, and that has a lasting impact. For each of us, I pray that we will walk away knowing that we are more than conquerors, and we can succeed in the midst of trial. As I reflect on my journey here, it is clear that I have undergone quite the transformation. I will never forget the first day I arrived as a new student at Quincy College back in September of 2018. I was very shy and fresh out of high school. I avoided social interactions at all costs. If you knew me today, you'd be surprised to know I was afraid to even order a pizza over the phone. <laughs> I remember feeling so embarrassed as I stood there trembling after taking the placement exam. I heard a gentleman in the room tell the exam proctor, there is a little girl here who needs help. He was absolutely right, I did need help, and because I chose to embark on my journey here at Quincy College, I received the help that I really needed. It is truly remarkable how quickly this place began to mature that little girl. I had a lot of growing up to do, and at times it was a real battle to get out of bed and come to school in the morning. This is because I didn't have to, there was no one gonna force me to come to class. That was simply my choice. I can see now that in life we have many choices and we have free will to make choices that determine our ultimate destiny. The investment and the sacrifices we have made to pursue an education will open up doors that no man can shut. Nothing is impossible for us. We just have to do something while we still have the chance. Gordon Lindsay said it perfectly when he wrote, the best way to gain experience is to do something. During my time here at Quincy College, I found this to be very true. We become more valuable in every aspect as we begin to gain more experience. But how do we do that? We just have to step up and do something. For myself, this started as simply talking to more people on campus, participating in class, and it quickly expanded far beyond that. Fall of 2019, I decided to get more involved. I played for the co-ed soccer team, joined the Gamma Beta Phi Honor Society, the business club, and the fashion club. Shortly after being involved with the clubs, I stepped into leadership positions. No experience, no qualifications, I just did it. I was a full-time student, president of the business club, president of the Gamma Beta Phi Honor Society, and the vice president of the fashion club. Now, I do not share this to brag or pretend like I am special compared to any of you, because I am not. I just did it even when I was afraid I saw an opportunity and I went for it. My involvement with the school was brought to new levels during the spring semester of 2020, which didn't last very long. <laughs> I was here at the Quincy campus five days a week. Although I had two classes out of the days of the week, I worked in the career service office every day through the work study program. Through this opportunity, I learned fundamental skills that brought me into my first career. I knew what I wanted, and that was to work at Fidelity Investments. I was told Fidelity is a really tough company to get into, and I will definitely need a bachelor's degree to get a job. My story proves that to be false. 
We do not need to attend a fancy college to have a successful career, just a willingness to work hard. It is through the experience I gained at Quincy College that set me up to land a position at Fidelity Investments during the spring of 2021 before earning an associate's degree in college. <laughs> now I am one year into my first career, having just accepted a promotion that is bringing me back to the great state of Texas. Finally, the choice Oh, financially, the choice to go to Quincy College has set me up to purchase my first home at age 22. I was able to save money and build credit while living at home with my parents going to this school. And I believe it's a no-brainer for anybody that doesn't have a plan. It wasn't my grades or qualifications that brought me here, but the experience I gained by stepping up to do something even when I didn't know what I was doing. Spoiler alert, most people don't. In pursuit of my associate's degree in accounting, I went from being a quiet girl, having to talk myself out of bed in the morning, to an outgoing professional. The choices to get up, stand up, and speak up led to maturity and memories that I will forever treasure. It is the best investment that I have made to this day. which will continue to pay dividends for the rest of my life. Make the most of where you are right now and take advantage of every opportunity. Don't let anyone rob you of your free will. Keep on pressing forward and just do something. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I want to recognize the incredible staff here at Quincy College. These people selflessly pave the way for others. Thank you, Leanne, from Financial Aid, wherever you are. She helped me with my FAFSA every single year. And thank you to Sarah and Ruthie from the library for joyfully helping me on many occasions and never seeming bothered by my requests. There was a point where I almost gave up on finishing my degree, and in all honesty, I can say it is the staff that brought me back here. So from the bottom of my heart, I thank each one of you. And I just want to say that as the former president of the Quincy College Business Club, it is my honor to announce that Quincy College will now be offering a bachelor's degree in business, <sighs> which is a great opportunity and honestly a no-brainer if you've made it this far. Might as well get that bachelor's. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah, for your words of wisdom and for sharing a reflection of your Quincy College experience. Yes, some of you may wonder about the academic regalia, the robes and caps participants in these ceremonies wear. In medieval times, the robes provided warmth in unheated buildings. In 14th century, robes became prescribed as a kind of academic uniform to show knowledge, accomplishment, and also humility. By the 16th century, colors became adopted, representing fields of study or colors on the university granting the degree. Associates, bachelor's, and master's degree robes are untrimmed, while doctoral degree robes have velvet bars down the front and three bars of velvet on the sleeves. Members of the governing body wear doctoral robes. The president's robe has four bars and the college colors. Masters and doctoral regalia include hoods with the scholars' home universities' colors in the lining, and velvet in a color symbolizing the area of scholarship, such as green for medicine, purple for law, and gold for science. 
Today we are conferring associate degrees and certificates. Like Sarah said, I am proud to announce that next year, at this time, we will be graduating students from our Bachelor's of Science in Business Management program as the only community college in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts awarding bachelor's degrees. Before we begin the conferral of degrees, I would, like to, I would like to acknowledge the students from many nations included in our commencement ceremony today. Over the years, we have students who have graduated from 123 countries. We take special pride in those who have traveled far and wide to earn their degrees at Quincy College. We also celebrate veterans and active military service members who are also graduating today. Veterans and active military service members, please stand so we may thank you for your service and congratulate you on your earning degrees. Thank you. At this time, we will confer degrees. President De Castaparo, would you please join me at the podium? Would all candidates for the associate degree in academic division of liberal arts, namely behavioral science, English, fine arts, drama, music, and visual arts, general studies, government, history, humanities, psychology, social sciences, and sociology, please rise. Dr. Yatton, has each of these candidates met all the requirements prescribed by our associate in arts degree programs in these fields? Yes, President DeCristofaro. Very well. Candidates, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Governors of Quincy College and the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, I confer on you the associate in arts degree with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Please be seated. Would all candidates for the Associate in Science degree in the Natural and Health Sciences, including Biology, Biotechnology and Good Manufacturing Practice, Exercise Science and Personal Training, Mathematics, Medical Laboratory Technician, Natural Science or Physical Therapist Assistants, please rise. Dr. Yatin, has each one of these candidates met all the requirements prescribed by our associates in science degree programs in these fields? Yes, President de Cristofaro. Very well, candidates. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Governors of Quincy College and the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, I confer on you the associate in science degree with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations. Please be seated. Would all candidates for the Associate in Arts or Associate in Science degree in academic division of professional programs, namely accounting, business, business management, computer science, cybersecurity, networking or programming, criminal justice, early childhood education, elementary education, healthcare administration, human services, paralegal studies or security management. Please rise. Right. <laughs> Dr. Yatin, has each one of these candidates met all of the requirements prescribed by the Associate in Arts and Associates in Science degree programs in these fields? Yes, President de Cristofaro. Very well, candidates by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Governors of Quincy College and the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, I confer on you the Associate in Arts or Associates in Science degree specified by your program of studies with all the rights and privileges 
pertaining thereto. Congratulations. Please be seated. On Tuesday, May 17th, our candidates for an associate degree in nursing received their Quincy College pins. Would all candidates for the associate in science degree in nursing please rise? Dr. Yatin, has each one of these candidates met all of the requirements prescribed by our associate in science degree in nursing? Yes, President De Christopher. Very well, candidates. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Governors of Quincy College and the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, I confer on you the associate in science degree in nursing with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations, nurses. Please be seated. Now we will confer certificate degrees. Would all candidates for a certificate in biotechnology, early childhood education, elder care, emergency medical technician, entrepreneurship, exercise science, personal training, foundational fitness, healthcare foundation, medical billing and coding, paralegal studies, phlebotomy, practical nursing, social work, substance addiction, surgical technology, and web and mobile development. Please rise. Dr. Yatin, has each one of these candidates met all the requirements prescribed by our certificate programs in these fields? Yes, President DeCristofaro. Very well. Candidates, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Governors of Quincy College and the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, I confer on you the certificate specified by your program of studies with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. You may be seated. Congratulations. Now all graduates, please rise. As a token of your new status as graduates, please move your tassels from the right side of your motorboards to the left. Congratulations to you all. Be seated. Be seated. Are you all set? Thank you. At this time, we will now present diplomas to the graduates. Marshals, please prepare the graduates. The graduates from the Division of Professional Programs. Patrice Freeman. Antonella Gula. Kyle Santos Abru, cum laude.
Christopher Montero Semedo, cum laude. Idaline Vargas, cum laude. Jennifer Marie Farnsworth, magna cum laude. Farah August. Yudelen Joseph. Marie Katiana Bienaime, cum laude. Anne Kerzuzzi Fevre. Linda Alexis. Cassidy Marie Duncan, cum laude. Andrew Thomas Roy. Jamial Malik Okeowo. Desiree Lopes. Brian Michael McGillicuddy, summa cum laude. Dara Silva Morera. Terence Michael Lowe, U.S. Army. Devin Charles Oguero. Donlop Hartley Munnings, magna cum laude. Christopher L. Golden. Isabel Rose Buchanan, cum laude. Allison Melissa Karam. Jessica Blanchard, summa cum laude, Army National Guard. Cheryl Donna Lashley, cum laude. Timothy Michael Zanetti, summa cum laude. Demetrius Vozella, summa cum laude. Stephen La, summa cum laude. Ryan Scott Larson, Abigail Zoe Laycock, summa cum laude. Nicole Alexandra Baldwin, cum laude. Jamie Ann Welsh. Olivia Catherine Champa. Courtney Starr Kennedy, summa cum laude. Brittany Lynette Morissette, magna cum laude. Brian Allen Butterworth. Stephen Aroldo Philippe, cum laude. Odili Cepeda Gutierrez. Hannah Rose Bernasconi, magna cum laude. George Carlos Orici. Stanislaus Miklasevsky, summa cum laude. Ina Holosinska, summa cum laude. Renee Jasmine Plummer. Naisha Beach. Bryant O'Neill James, cum laude. Nancy Shav Smith, cum laude. Kelsey Michelle Fair. Robert John Mullen, summa cum laude, U.S. Army. Harakela Laco, magna cum laude. Leah Mills. Robinia Chambers. 
Today's student commencement speaker, Sarah Elizabeth Nisbet, magna cum laude. Abderrahman Del Bashir, cum laude. Thank you. Shante Maynard, magna cum laude. Jasmine Dana Capel. Jonathan Bell, magna cum laude, U.S. Air Force. Yuhan He, summa cum laude. Kristen Marie Topali, summa cum laude. Eric Michael DeFilippis, summa cum laude. Scott Griffin, summa cum laude. Uh, Joshua De La Rosa. Nicole Elizabeth Blunt, summa cum laude. Sarah Murdoch, magna cum laude. Duan Nguyen, summa cum laude. Jessica L. Fonseca. Leonardo Antonio Petri, magna cum laude. Haley Clifford, summa cum laude. Courtney Elizabeth Smith. Kamini Christina Singh, cum laude. Jude A. V. O. Amandi Toriano Weaver. Cameron Taylor Mason. Daniel Robert Jenkins, summa cum laude, U.S. Air Force. Louisdor Michel, summa cum laude. Marie Stephanie Lebrun. Wilson Paulo Araujo de Pina. Keola Brandown Lopes, magna cum laude. Emily Barbosa. Thomas David Faulkner. Zlatan Knezevich, summa cum laude. Joanne Toby. Nicole Lee Heward, cum laude. Rick, Rebecca Lynn Correa, summa cum laude. Wilson Bendy Guerrier. Wilkerson Bendy Guerrier. And Kevin Ferreira Cabral. The Division of Nursing. John J. Benoit. Lucy Amos Weinberg. Cassandra Della Mulroy. Amy Lee Durkee, cum laude. Dana Josephine O'Brien. 
Pamela Caroline Kane. Liana Tomac, magna, magna cum laude. Kathleen Marie McDonald. Alisa Pasquino. Amanda M. Paulson, cum laude. Emma Marie Wall. Michaela Julia Giorgio. Martin Edwards Jimenez, magna cum laude. Shonda E. Jordan, cum laude. Heather Ann McAuliffe. Amanda Lee LeBlanc. Rifle Ram Narain, Jr. Tina Ann Riley, magna cum laude. Katrina Murphy, cum laude. Nikira Leanne Nelson. Antonio Clive Reed. Rhonda Des Ravines. Sean Gareth Linton. Marie Casagnol. Latoria Carswell. Casey Michelle Bullard. Magna cum laude. Christine Marilyn Champagne, cum laude. Anne Carol Normally. April Marie Urban. Emily Rose Van Tassel, cum laude. Courtney Marie Mason, magna cum laude. Emily Susan Wilson. Tomorrow Bridell. Crit, uh, Christy Caesar. Jessica T. Bar Barbosa. <coughs> Sorry. Nicole Alicia Baker. Brianna Isabel Manelis. Gael Aristil. Casey Dawn O'Malley. Brittany Ann Carter. Kelsey Lauren Bither. Melissa Danielle Duhaney, cum laude. The Division of Natural and Health Sciences, please. from the Division of Natural and Health Sciences. Cullen Patrick Petit Demange. Gian Piero De Rito, summa cum laude. Caterina Orocho. Mohammed Naomi, magna cum laude. Jessica Rebecca. Jasmine Vasquez, magna cum laude. Aklilu Mamo, summa cum laude. Yemisrach Yahwala, summa cum laude. Samia El Rahib El Kharibs, summa cum laude. Mariam Mufala, summa cum laude. Halima E. Taib, summa cum laude. Jamila Parveen, cum laude.
Bisu Nam, summa cum laude. Jumin Nam, summa cum laude. Jennifer Almeida McCaffrey. Myra Duran, summa cum laude. Stephanie Spicuza, summa cum laude. Michaela Elizabeth Willett, summa cum laude. Andre Francis Feliciano, cum laude. Erin Lynn Richardson, magna cum laude. Amanda Rose Rattigan. Lena Marie Cody, cum laude. Rose C. Aspelaire. Kelly Bishop. Leah Marie Kilrow. Christian A. Ingarjola. Louis David Alexander III, cum laude. Amabel Merilia Cado. Paul Ryan Mullaney. Griffin Taylor De Jesus. Tram T. Huyen Pham, magna cum laude. Abdemula Dui, cum laude. Sahafab Hong Saluek, summa cum laude. Albina McMillan. Rita Marie Maurin, summa cum laude, U.S. Navy. Chinedum J. Brendan. Chinedum J. Brendan, magna cum laude. Chidozi J. Brendan, magna cum laude. Katiana Dennis. Alicia Jackie Coneal. Jacqueline Chesney, summa cum laude. Pragya Mala Sreshta, summa cum laude. Srijana Nupani Parajuli, cum laude. Ratana Ros. Nolofar Yasmin. Jihan Leila. Emdi Mahafuzir Rahman, magna cum laude. Gabriel Sebastian Kubias, magna cum laude. Aida Wabdesalam, summa cum laude. Sadie Rose Gears. Brian M. Kennedy, magna cum laude. T. Lua Li, cum laude. Rebecca K. Uh, Michalowski, summa cum laude. Sylvia Stefan, Cum laude. Christine McKenzie, summa cum laude. Hua Sun, magna cum laude. Cassandra Stencia Gentle. La Prima Shade Gilbert Dunn. Erica Angelica Teixeira. Teixeira, cum laude. Jessla Jean, cum laude. Kiana Aisha Burton. Ashkan Justin Bradan, Bradan Beck. Magna cum laude. S Symphony Hall, magna cum laude. Rebecca Stouffer. Tamara Leanne Licorice. Barbara Jean Baptiste. The candidates from Liberal Arts.
Chelsea Lynn Soham. Christopher P. Dindy, magna cum laude. Jerome Stevens. Damani S. Scott. Ryan Gray Sambiana McWade, summa cum laude. Daija Lanai Kirkland. U.S. Army. Jessica Cardinius, summa cum laude. Patrick Joseph Birmingham, magna cum laude. Jackie Chong, summa cum laude. Serena Alexander Brown, summa cum laude. Alana Christine Connors Duffy, magna cum laude. Adelsa Semedo Dos Santos. Stephen Ryan Honrado Foster, magna cum laude. Kate Mio Martino, summa cum laude. Megan Michael, summa cum laude. Rojin Jahangirian, summa cum laude. Jiling Ruan, cum laude. Brandon M. Jackson, cum laude. Tori Hadea Bakoti. Hannah Mariah Fioli, uh, cum laude. Ramon Sato, magna cum laude. Miraline Theodore, summa cum laude. Sean D. Garner. Petrina Walker. Ana Paula Figuera Mota Amaral. Congratulations, graduates. We did not coordinate, and you will understand why I'm saying this. Saying this. Before we continue, I invite the graduates to please stand up and wave thank you to the family members and friends who have supported you on your journey to today. I would like to take this moment to thank also to those who shared their voices with you today. Professor of Humanities and English, Stephen Dooner, for being our guide and announcer today. Class of 2022 commencement student speaker, Sarah Nisbet, for her eloquent and moving reflection of what Quincy College meant to her. And the distinguished speaker, Governor Baker, for such a meaningful, engaging, and moving commencement address.
President De Cristofaro and board member Frank Santoro, thank you for your leadership and all you do to make this day possible. I also would like to take this moment and thank our partners, City of Quincy and Building and Maintenance Department for this beautiful setting. <laughs> Last but not least, thank you Mayor Koch for all of your continued support for Quincy College. And a final word to our graduates, their families and friends. Please, spread the word about Quincy College. Wherever you are in your journey, from associate to bachelors, we are dedicated to your success. Thank you for choosing Quincy College, and once again, congratulations. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you graduates of the Quincy College class of 2022. Today, the graduates will recess to fanfare of the Triumph Schuyler Van Heulen, Berkeley School of Music alumnus and son of former Dean Vincent Van Heulen, authored this exceptional composition. In just a few moments, the commencement ceremony will come to a close. I ask that the audience please remain seated until the graduates, faculty, staff, and speakers have left the field. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us today as we celebrate our graduates. Once again, congratulations, graduates. Professor Sharon King, will you please come forward to close the ceremony? I now declare the Quincy College 2022 commencement exercises closed. Ladies and gentlemen, today's VIP speakers and commencement platform dignitaries. Ladies and gentlemen, the Quincy College faculty. Ladies and gentlemen, today's distinguished special guests. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the graduates of Quincy College, beginning with the, the Division of Professional Programs. the Division of Natural and Health Sciences. Ladies and gentlemen, the Division of Nursing and the Division of Liberal Arts.
Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for attending Quincy College's 2022 Commencement Ceremony. Thank you.